my teeth look lighter. The next topic I want to tackle is this missing child case that dates back to 1938. The particular case that I'm talking about is uh, about a girl named Marjorie West. So Marjorie West went missing on Sunday, May 8th, 1938, which is it was it was Mother's Day um, so the family attended church in Bradford and then after church uh, their family and two of their friends mr. and mrs. Lloyd Averland they decided to go to the Allegheny National Forest to a particular clear clearing area um, just to you know spend Mother's Day just hang out um, this particular place that they went to is um, very popular among fishers and hunters. So around 3 p.m. that afternoon, Cecilia, who is Marjorie's mother, decided to go to the car and just take a rest. So uh, Dorothea and Marjorie, Dorothea is Marjorie's older sister, they decided to pick wildflowers uh, as a bouquet for their mother on Mother's Day. So, um, when Dorothea got to the car to hand her the bouquet to her mother, she turned around and Marjorie was gone. She was nowhere to be found. So, the family decided to drive to Kane to use a phone, and that's about seven miles away from where they were. The search for Marjorie expanded over months. So, um, 3,000 people in total went searching for Marjorie. The first night, after the police couldn't find anything, the first night uh, about 200 volunteers uh, joined, including the Citizen Conservation Corp, Moose and Elk Lodges. The effort stopped when rain started around 1 a.m. so that Monday the party grew to 500 people. And then Tuesday, May 10th, police brought police hounds, or police hounds, bloodhounds from New York. Um, the dogs found some clues, but accounts of Marjorie missing, uh, they varied. The dogs, this is alleged, the dogs went up to a cabin that had the door nailed shut. And when they broke down the door, there was no evidence of Marjorie ever being there. The search did find her crush bouquet flowers. And many people believe that she was picked up by the roof, which, I mean, if you vanish without a trace, that's the next thing is just who was in the area at the time of her capture. So witnesses say they saw three cars pass. Two of them were able to be identified, the third was not. The third was a man seen fleeing in a Plymouth. And I'm gonna revert back to that particular person. So um, this man flees in a Plymouth and he speeds off so fast that another motorist pulls into a ditch. So that Wednesday, the mayor of Bradford, Hugh Ryan, issued a plea for a thousand volunteers. And the next day he got 2,500 people. Most of the volunteers were um, actually veterans of World War I. And unfortunately for the father, the father's name is Shirley. Um, he didn't leave until, he didn't leave the forest for about a week theories around her uh, being missing, captured, what have you. Um, since it was during the Depression era, apparently there was a lot of illegal adoption rings. So kidnapping in America, so it skyrocketed even more after cars became a more common household item. 
so in September 1950, um, Tennessee authorities announced allegations that Georgia Tan, the executive director of the Memphis branch of Tennessee Children's Home Society, she had adopted out about uh, more than a thousand babies for one million dollars since the 1930s. Uh, she was tricking poor couples into giving up their babies. Uh, she died three days after the invest investigation became public. Um, many of these children never knew their birth parents, including famed professional wrestler Ric Flair, born in 1949. Um, he actually mentions that in his autobiography, if that's important to you. Presumably, the wealthy clients who adopted through Tan's agency, including actress Joan Mommy Dearest Crawford, never knew of her methods. I don't know if I buy that, but the theory with, with Georgia Tan and Marjorie West was kind of dissipated. It, it never, there was never really a firm connection between the two. Um, A few days after Marjorie disappeared, a taxi driver in Thomas, West Virginia told police late that night on Mother's Day a man and a weeping girl checked into the town's Imperial Hotel. But, you know, it, this driver believed that this could potentially be Marjorie, but it ended up being that um, it was just a man and his daughter who had been traveling and she was just being fussy and just very sleepy. So a man by the name of Harold Thomas Bud Beck um, heard about this story in a bar that he used to own. And in 1998, when internet access was more prominent, he posted a $10,000 reward for any information about Marjorie. He um, had an up-to-date photo of Dorothea, which we know is Marjorie's older sister. So one person contacted him and she was a nurse that worked at a company in Florida. He took a trip to meet her, but this woman denied being Marjorie. So in 2005, he, this woman contacted Beck again and they decided to meet at her childhood farm in North Carolina. Now, when they finally met there, he relayed, I'm sorry, she relayed a story to him that her mother told her about her childhood. Um, in 1938, the nurse's father left that very farm and drove north to work in Bradford's refineries for the winter. Come spring, it was time to return to his crops and driving south past the Allegheny Forest on Mother's Day, he hit a little girl. There wasn't anybody there. Beck recounts he was going to take her to the hospital in Kane, but he was afraid she was dead. As he was driving the unconscious girl in the car, she woke up seemingly unharmed. He and his wife had lost their only daughter that winter and delivery had been difficult. They didn't think they could have any more children. So this man brought Marjorie to the farm and raised her. A few years, he lost an arm on board an aircraft carrier in the Second World War. The man told his wife he thought it was God's way of punishing him for what he had done. And the nurse used to tell her parents that she remembered another family, but they dismissed this. She also remembered a place with snowy way over her head. Oh, I'm sorry, snow way over her head. Um, after the Second World War, her parents had four more children. And the nurse only told Beck that story. He made two promises. One, he couldn't tell anybody about her identity except for Dorothea, whom she wanted to meet. And Beck could only publish her story after she, she died. Um, so by that time, when Dorothea got that information, she was very, very ill. So she couldn't meet this woman. Marjorie dies in 2010. 
So um, Beck decided to publish her story. So I, I have to revert back to um, this woman's father hitting a little girl on the highway and uh, deeming her unconscious or dead. How come no one heard this man uh, coming to a screeching halt and then you hear a loud bang? Like, why, why, hasn't, why is that not brought up, like, anywhere in this story? It's just, yeah. I mean, there's so much information about this, but I, I just want to, well, I'm going to end it there, so, um. You wanna say bye? I, you wanna say bye to everyone? <gasps> Mommy put me down, okay. Look how cute I am. Look how cute I am. Say bye.